Memory cards are a topic that I don't see covered all that much. There's so many of them out there now with different specifications that it could get so confusing knowing which one to buy. I've put together this video to help you figure out what card you might need for your camera. First off, I've got to say, look at your camera manual to know what type of card you need. This won't help you if you buy an XQD card for your SD card camera. That said, there's so many variations of that one card, like an SD card, it can get confusing knowing which one to buy. There's a different class number, V number, and U number, and they all mean different things, sort of. There's so many that I could discuss, but I'm going to stick to the major three that you might know. SD cards, CF Express cards, and Compact Flash. So let's start off with SD cards. You'll find different ratings on cards, such as this one, which has a U number, a V number, and a class number. So let's break those down. A class number, like class 10, guarantees a minimum write speed. So class 10 is 10 megabytes per second minimum. That's the lowest it'll go to, which is a good thing for 1080p video. That means you're never gonna get stuttering or a weird interruption. The U number is pretty similar to the class number. There's U1, which is 10 megabytes per second, U2, 20, and U3, and you guessed it, 30 megabytes per second minimum. Those are gonna be suitable for applications like 4K video recording. And then the V number takes it even further. That means, you know, this one is V30, which is good for 30 megabytes per second, which goes all the way up to V90, which is suitable for 8K video at 90 megabytes per second. Now, I wish, I am gonna tell this to the manufacturers, please consolidate this into one number so that it's no longer three different things that mean the same thing. Thanks. Different manufacturers, such as SanDisk right here, yeah, let's get the focus, they, you know, have good quality cards. And I'm going to tell you this because I have had bad experiences with, let's get this guy to focus. Yep, there we go. Lexar, my Lexar 32 gigs. They've had problems with recording in the past. My Nikon Z50 just has a terrible time. It always just says recording interrupted. So you're going to find different level of quality with different cards. Uh, older Lexars, older, older Lexars are good. But since they were bought by a different company, I have found that their quality has just not been great. So make sure to buy good SD cards that, you know, even though they'll say they guarantee that minimum, they might just run at that minimum all the time. Another thing is, is it a good idea to put one of these little guys, micro SD card into a bigger SD card holder and use that for your videos and photos? Mm, I'd say no, just because these things are so small that they'll generate so much heat if they're under a lot of pressure that that might cause premature wear and, well, failure. And you don't want to do that if you're recording a lot of video that day. That could suck, losing all that footage. So let's move on to the new kit on the block. Here you go. Let's focus it. Oh, 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 get in focus. There we go. That's an XQD card. And that's physically the same size as an CF Express card, but that's where the similarities end. First difference is that there are cameras that don't support CF Express cards out of the box, like the Nikon Z6 I'm shooting this on right now. It only supports XQD out of the box, but with a firmware update, it can support CF Express now. Others will support CF Express right out of the box, like the Z7 or Z6 IIs. Next is speed, and that is where these cards really differ. CF Express cards are much faster, and that's because they use two of the PCIe lanes in the camera. Yeah, these things run on PCIe, buddy. And see, XQD only runs on one PCIe lane. So you're gonna be getting speeds well into the thousands with CF Express, but only in the hundreds with XQD. So that means that performance for video recording, such as 8K or even 12K recording, is going to be much better on a CF Express card with all that headroom available to it. Plus, you can even utilize more buffer space for doing continuous burst fire shots. That's going to be great, depending on if your camera can handle that with its processor. So where does that leave? And I'm going to get this thing to focus again. This guy right here, the XQD card, the lowly XQD, XQD card. Well, in the CF Express dominated land, uh, 
kind of nowhere. Especially since XQD cards were outdated a couple years after they came out. And they were kind of proprietary because they were developed by Sony and only Nikon used them for a little bit. And then everybody else just kind of was like, yeah, CF Express. And also the price is still the same. I don't understand it. They're so much slower, but they're still the same price. So it's kind of dead in the water. Um, but does that mean you should be getting rid of your XQD cards and getting CF Express cards right now? Uh, probably not. Unless you want to shell out more money for a CF Express XQD reader, and that's that's a problem because the old XQD readers don't work with CF Express cards unless they say they work with CF Express cards. So if you don't want to spend the astronomical amount of money that these things cost, they're really expensive. You might want to stick with your XQD card if you're an XQD shooter, just like me. Cries a single tear. So is that it to talk about, you know, CF Express cards? This is it just a better XQD card? No, there's there's a little bit more to CF Express actually. There is a Type A, a Type B, and a Type C, which sounds like USB cables, but no, they're different types of CF Express cards. Now, Type A is found in a A7S 3 which you can have two Type A cards. They're physically smaller than SD cards, but they offer much better performance, like up to a, a gigabyte per second in performance. Whereas SD cards, I think they cap out about like a couple hundred megabytes per second. Why not go with a Type A on that one? Type B is the most common of the CF Express cards, and you'll find that on basically any new camera, like the Z6, the Z7, the new Sonys, new Canons, you'll find them all over the place. Uh, only reason I say it like that is because I'm a Nikon shooter and I don't really know what's uh, up with the other guys right now So uh, I gotta do some more research on them so I can make more content on them type B caps out at about two gigabytes per second So pretty darn fast huh? and then type C that is the physically largest and fastest card out of the bunch They are massive. I didn't know how big they were until I saw the measurements. And I was like wow that is almost the same size as an SSD, but the performance you get is up to four gigabytes per second. That's nuts. That's pretty fast. And we're getting that on, on cards now. Higher fidelity recording for video is gonna be more and more possible as we step up in these cards. So I guess you're kind of wondering like, why do we need like, you know, better video? Well, if you record in like 16K, you can crop in like crazy. So let's say you just record a huge scene you can just crop it in and then it will just look as good as if you recorded it in 4K because you know, it's like eight times or something like that. 4K, I have no idea. I should look that up at some point, but it is huge. Wait, no, four by four, 16, I think it's about 16 times. Oh my God, wow. Fun fact, it seems like the Xbox Series X is also using a CF Express Type B card, but with the guts of a Type C because physically, and I saw this on a, Spanish website there was a person who put the type B card inside of the Xbox and it worked sort of it read the card and said it wasn't compatible probably because it wasn't fast enough so there's probably like type C guts in there that's probably why it's huge instead of like small that's crazy though type CF Express you'll find it everywhere now it's gonna be everywhere all right and the last type of card we're gonna be talking about today is the compact flash or even C fast there's two different types, kind of, a little strange. There's like a huge history with Compact Flash, but I'm gonna keep it a little short just because, well, Compact Flash is sort of phased out at this point. No new cameras are gonna be built with it, I think. that It's just this bigger card that has ultimately been replaced by Compact Flash Express. Let's just at least talk about it because if you buy a used camera, this is gonna be helpful knowledge for you. So what you're gonna find is that this Compact Flash, see fast the later compact flash card so i'm talking like you know more recent compact flash is going to run you up around the 150 megabytes per second read and write speeds and then when you look at see fast well that's kind of into the 500s at that point there were some just little upgrades that went into making see fast better than compact flash but you have to make sure that your camera supports the see fast now 
older compact flash cards, those are going to run real slow because they're actually hard drives. Magnetic storage. Spinny boys. Don't buy them. Uh, it's just an old card that you don't really need <laughs> to be dealing with, especially if you uh, are going to have it on. You shake it around and, you know, you don't want to. Don't shake the hard drive. You're going to break the hard drive. <laughs> That's what happens if you shake hard drives and they're turned on. So, CFast and Compact Flash, there's two options you got right there. I explained that earlier. Which one do you buy though? Um, depends on what you really value. Do you want to spend your extra money buying a CFast card just for better transfer speeds on your computer? Because in reality, that's all it's going to be now, especially since CF Express has taken over the space in which compact flash was in you're gonna find that having a C fast card is not gonna be really worth having because you're not really gaining any tangible performance differences compact flash was already fast enough to do the high-speed shooting on some cameras but you know it depends do you really need it or do you not uh, do you really value speed in which it transfers from your camera to your computer or are you okay with saving the extra couple dollars and just waiting a little extra time for it to transfer off of there? Now, if you really need it, like maybe on a 1DX Mark III or on a Nikon D5, then sure, I can see that the increased speed will help with sustained shooting capability when you're doing those really long burst fire shots at like crazy FPS but I don't think it's gonna really be helpful if you're shooting on a D800 or D810 that doesn't really shoot all that fast or at like really high quality video. I don't think it's gonna be that important. I think it's better if you just save your money on that one. So that's basically three different memory cards that have a whole bunch of different things underneath them. Let's break that down again for you real quick. With SD cards, you have class numbers, you have U numbers, and you have a V number. Just, I would say, look for the V number. The V number is most important right now, especially if it's like, you know, V30 to V90, you're gonna be gold. If you look at XQD or CF Express cards, drop the XQD, get a CF Express, make sure it's from a good brand like a SanDisk, and that it's a high speed card. That's about it. And then Compact Flash, well, if you want a CFast card for transfer speeds, or if you have a 1DX series, or if you have a D4 camera, then, well, go for it. That's gonna be worth it for you, but if not, stick with the old Compact Flash. It should be just good enough for you. Make sure you buy reputable branded cards, like Sony, like SanDisk. I've had problems with Lexar, so I can't recommend them, but your mileage may vary. Also, pro tip. Avoid buying huge cards, like a 512 gig card, just because, well, memory cards tend to fail. Uh, and it's not a good time if you fill that 512 and you haven't backed it up. This goes for hard drives too. Buy a second one. If you can do redundancy, do redundancy. But if you can't, stick with smaller cards. You're just gonna have a better time. You know, it's, it, you're gonna have to frequently transfer things but let's say, you know, one 64 gig card fails out of, you know, the two that you have to make up for the one 128 gig card. It's better than your whole 128 gig card being filled and then you lose everything and it hasn't been backed up. It's just like crazy because I've seen it happen and it costs so much money to restore hard drives. And you know, that's, that's just crazy. It's like 900 Canadian dollars for a hard drive. And also like, Here's the thing, uh, flash cards, SD cards, they aren't recoverable. Well, not easily recoverable. And they may cost more. So just buy smaller cards. Uh, you'll probably have a better time if something fails, if, especially if you're using it a lot, you know? And also back your cards up. After you do a shoot, back your card up. After you do anything, actually just back your card up. You know, you never know when it's going to fail. And that's what makes me so sketched about my like Z cameras because they only have one card slot. So I'm just like, please don't fail, please don't fail, please don't fail. <laughs> Anyways, well, that's it for the video today. Hope you liked it. You know, this is uh, something I put a little bit more research into, wrote a script for it, 
made it pretty good. I've had my iPad in the hand the entire time. And yeah, uh, if you liked it, hit subscribe. Um, that's the left side. My socials are going to be on the right side, actually, right here. You can find me there. Go follow me. You know, why not? Uh, give it this video a like, subscribe, why not? And uh, yeah, I'll see you in another video where I talk about something maybe a little more exciting than memory cards. Maybe a little more exciting than memory cards, but who knows? Memory cards to me are exciting. I love storage. I love things like this. So yeah, peace out. Ow, I just poked myself in the eye. Great. <laughs> I'm a dummy.